Now, uh, overall, as in UM, so we take charge of local partnerships as well as international. And it's not just about universities. Industries are becoming very important. And I know that this is in one of your agenda and especially so post-COVID. Yeah, there's lots of things I think we can talk with the partners. It's not just about, um, you know, about finances or about, uh, we can talk about internships. We can talk about, you know, opportunities of employability and so on. So, okay, in 2019, we have had 91 local agreements or MOUs. Uh, uh, international, definitely, we have more. Yeah, so we have more than 220 um, MOUs in 2019. All right, now this slide is important. The next two slides will be very important. Eh? Um, because I think those of you who are working in, uh, or part of IUFOM, there will be questions. Now, in terms of agreement, it's not just IRO that is handling. There are three other offices, you know, number two, three, four. They are UPUM, PPGP, and UMCIC, who are also in charge of agreements. So how do we define, you know, which area they're in charge. So this table will be very helpful. IRO, we are in charge of basic general MOU and the MOAs are pertaining to academic related collaborations. They may be talking about dual or joint programs. They may be talking about research grants, now which do not involve grants or fund transfer. And we also uh, take charge of student exchange program agreement. Now, this is also called SEPA. You know, sometimes if you do hear the word SEPA, SEPA, they're actually talking about student exchange program agreements. Yeah, we are, we are also in charge of letter of intent. Now, what about the other agreements? Agreements that involve consultancy, because some of you will be approached, uh, wanted, uh, you know, they want to appoint you as, as a consultant. Now, your agreement will need to be um, handled by UPUM. Now, this is important because um, based on my experience as well, there are consultation fees. And uh, so this is different from, I think, the um, CIC when you do drug trials. Huh? So this is more of when uh, maybe even companies are going to appoint you as consultant. There are certain fees for you to, to charge for, let's say, your report, let's say, for your meetings. And UMCIC actually have all the rates and they can advise you on how the charges should be, should be done. Yeah. And uh, they can also handle the uh, non-disclosure agreements. Now, for research collaborations, which involve grant transfer, yeah, you may have cases whereby the agreement is signed and after the signature, some money will be transferred into UM. So usually this kind of agreement is handled by PPGP because once it's signed, they need to open an account in e-finance for you. If we handle it, it will actually slow down things. And they will say that they do not know, oh, this agreement is, is going on. So they have agreed that they will handle this so that immediately after that, you should have an account with e-finance. Yeah? Uh, and they can also do the material transfer agreement. The fourth one is UMCIC. It's uh, re with regards to product, um, uh, any commercialization, licensing, or IP. Yeah? So these are the four offices. Now, no worries. Even if you're not sure where to go, you can come to us first, and then we will direct yeah? if there's any confusion. Now, at the central level, there is what we call as UMIs. This is under Prof. Yasmin, Rofina Yasmin, and they are the UM Office of Industry and Community Engagement. Now, this office is something that we can talk later, yeah, which you can also tap on it to find out about you know, potential industry partners. Okay. All right. The other thing to note would be um, legal unit has advised us any MOUs that has sent to them, they need at least two weeks and MOA, they need at least four weeks. Now, this is what they have, um, the duration that they have identified. There are some cases that we will actually need to expedite and we will work with them when there is a necessity for that. Yeah, But general ruling, give them some time because they are handling campus-wide agreements. Yeah, So uh, please inform um, our colleagues so that, you know, they, they sort of can plan all this. I do know sometimes partnership, you need to be very opportunistic as well. And sometimes you just need to do within a week or two. Now, in cases like this, we will help you to assist. Yeah, we'll assist you. Now, for Myra audit, because I think, you know, at faculty level, uh, your unit will be approached when they are collecting Myra data. Now, at IUFOM, please make sure that any agreements that we have pertaining to research, 
you know, you can include in the addendum or additional documents, you know, include in your proposal so that there is a title to that because the, the uh, core agreement may not have all this information and the signatory of all agreements is basically the vice chancellor unless she uh, turun kuasa to the dean and when she he turun kuasa there should be a letter and that letter normally comes up from my office yeah the other thing that we uh, most of the time we forget is that to list down all the members of the research project sometimes we only list down the pi but we are encouraging our researchers to include the whole team because when uh, Myra comes to count the marks, they count the number of people that is in the project. So if you only have the PI, your marks is only from the PI, that's it. Yeah. So uh, please encourage all our staff to do this. And in terms of evidence that you know, uh, IUFOM needs to provide uh, IO, um, our office, normally you know, uh, any snapshot or publication or photos, even via handphone, would be suffice yeah so as long as we have that uh you know the activities that you have we have evidence so it will be counted for myra yeah so reporting will be similar i think uh, we do contact zura and more for um you know half yearly or yearly uh, reports yeah now the second core function is international engagements so we used to have lots of visits in the region of more than 200 per year yeah and this is physical visits from all over the world we have um, uh, categorized them by regions. So you can see the five top regions that are coming to us. Of course, East Asia, yeah? China, Taiwan, Japan, yeah? Hong Kong, Southeast Asia. And we have uh, visits from local partners as well, from Europe, South Asia, Middle East. And we have also from really other regions as well. Now, of course, with the COVID, everything has been turned to visual. <laughs> yeah, uh, But we have not stopped. So, so the, the meetings and engagement is still very much ongoing, even during MCO. Yeah? And just to tell, let you know as well, during MCO, our agreements was, there was ongoing because what happened was that um, legal unit gave us the approval to use e-signature. Um, so with that, I think Faculty of Medicine, I think we had one or two probably uh, being signed through e-signature. Uh, yeah? Now, the third core function and the last is about our global and regional networking. University Malaya is a member of more than 30 global associations. Yeah? That is only at central level. I think at each PTJ, you may also be members of your own expert groups or associations. Now, so therefore, uh, now if you realize that uh, I am circling, uh, I mean, I've put circles into some of this association, which we are very active. Now, these are uh, associations whereby we may be the founding members of this association, or we may be the exclusive member of the association. Now,